All right, everybody. Welcome, welcome to the DC booth. Uh, it's my great pleasure to introduce you to, to Adam Glass and Bernard Chang, the team from Teen Titans, the new Teen Titans. Is your mic on, Bernard? I don't know. Is it on? Yes, it is. Can you hear it? I can hear it. Yeah, I can hear you. Um, so we wanted to talk to you a little about some of the new characters. And basically, we were going to start with talking about Crush, because we really love this character and this idea that, uh, believe it or not, that Lobo would have an illegitimate daughter that he wouldn't know about. I know that's shocking that he would not be father of the year or have any idea that he has a kid out there. But we started to sort of talk about the idea of what this character could be and what she could look like. And, uh, I, you know, some of this is drawn, I think, as writers, we sort of go from our own lives. And I have a 17-year-old daughter. And uh, I think some of the ladies here could support me in that sometimes other girls can be really mean. I know, right? Surprise, surprise. And... Uh, she turned around and she would come home and she'd be so angry and you know we're, we're told that girls aren't supposed to show rage and yet girls have all this rage. So I got a punching bag and my daughter would start hitting the bag and she really liked it and I, was, I wanted to write a character that represented girl rage, you know, and girl fight club. And so we basically started talking about this character of, and then the character just, the more I talked about her, the more we started to speak about her, she literally, started to sound a lot like Lobo. So we were like, it just sort of seemed like a nice marriage to say, well, what if Lobo had a daughter? What if he didn't know about her? And how did she grow up? And in, in Teen Titans 25, you're going to find out her story. But with that said, Bernard, do you want to talk a little bit about her design and how you, you went about her? I think uh, when we first started working on the project together, Adam and I got together and we had a, a kind of a lunch session. And we were just riffing. You know, whenever you work on a new book and a new project, um, there's a extreme, you know, you have to collaborate with someone else. And you have to understand where they're coming from and what they want from their characters and their storylines. And Adam, I, Adam and I kind of hit it off right off the bat. You know, we had very similar kind of childhoods. He's almost like a brother from another mother. And here, here. Uh, even though he grew up in New York, I grew up in Miami, and they're pretty much very similar. Um, I had a lot of friends uh, growing up that were New Yorkers that would come down to Miami. They called snowbirds because they come down during the winter time. And uh, we'd all hang out and co collaborate and we had a lot of things in common. So when he was talking about Crush and um, what he wanted to do with the character, uh, I was able to resonate with that right away and uh, give her a little bit more of an attitude, uh, a little bit more of um, a punkish kind of look. Um, something that she wants. I figure she's the kind of girl that wants to have her own style, to not follow others, but to kind of lead her own way. Uh, agreed. Um, one of the things we bonded over was 90s hip-hop. So a lot of what you see here and the flavor and stuff we talked about, as you can see, I'm, uh, as my wife said, I'm still dressing sure. like I'm 19 years old. So um, it's you know just the kind of energy and power and influence we wanted to have. So... With Crush was, you know, we wanted her to obviously look a little bit like Lobo, but we wanted, like he said, to have her own flavor. So we started to do all these different designs and, and should, you know, what does she look like and, and all that stuff. And, and I'll say something to you guys, and this is really being completely honest. I think we're still finding certain things about her as we draw her and we write her. We talk about her. She's a new character. But one of the things I really said is, I grew up in New York, and I said, I want her to look like a New York girl, not an L.A. girl. And that's nothing against you, L.A. girls. I got love for you. <laughs> but I wanted her to look like a real girl, and I wanted her to sort of, woman, I should say, young lady. And uh, I think Bernard really d does a good job of that, you know? Sometimes our superhero, especially women, could look almost like, you know, like they were, you know, a Kardashian or something like that. And I wanted these girls to look like a girl walk down the street. So, with that, you know, um, I know, I love that. That's very punk rock, the earring uh, studs and all that stuff and the attitude that she has. I think uh, that's Adam made a good point, too. Since we're starting on the book and it's a, a new look, new fresh start, uh, usually for an artist it takes a little bit of while to kind of find... Um, that character. Sometimes you'll find it maybe takes like two or three issues before we really settle into a groove. 
Um, but we've also been spending a lot of time developing the characters, uh, developing the, their headquarters, Mercy Hall, um, which is no longer the original, you guys remember their headquarters used to be like a big giant T. And now it's going to be a different, um, uh, different building, different structure. Uh, so, uh, you wanted to pick Red Hook, right? Yeah, we're, it's in Brooklyn, Red Hook, Brooklyn. And it's an ex-old uh, abandoned detention center for kids. So we thought, what a better place to have these little terrors, these little teen terrors, than an ex-detention center. So that becomes their new place. And Bernard did an amazing job designing it. Uh, we're so excited like, for you guys to see and share all this. Uh, the book comes out, number 20, comes out on uh, this Wednesday, the 25th. I mean, uh, when Adam said Red Hook, I was like, man, I used to live on in Carroll Gardens on yeah, Court Street yeah. on the G train, Smith and Ninth station. That was the last station before you hit Red Hook. Yep. Yeah. And it's changed a lot, Red Hook. Oh, it, it has. <laughs> now we can't afford to live in Red Hook. But uh, back then, it was uh, a real cool place to be. But as you can see, as he puts her together, you know, you definitely see a little bit of Lobo in her. But what I love what Bernard's done is given her a whole flavor to herself, too. And trust me, the last thing Crush wants to be is her father in any way, shape, or form. In fact, they will meet someday. I'm sure it's not going to go very well. You know, uh, she grew up not knowing who her dad was and then, you know, only discovered that he's an intergalactic dirtbag uh, did not make her day. So we're talking a lot about Crush and who he's drawing right now. Talked a little bit about the new T-Titans uh, headquarters, which is now Mercy Hall, which you guys will see in, in the first book. And then the other characters, too, that started to come out uh, from us. And a couple of these you know already. Like, let's talk a little bit about Red Arrow, who's a Miko queen. Great character. She's Green Arrow's half-sister. Oliver Queen's half-sister. Fun character. You know, what I liked about her was that her and Damien had a lot in common. So they both grew up in a very similar way, raised by assassins, raised to be sort of killers, and then sort of both find themselves, her through her brother, her half-brother, and Damien through his dad, Batman, basically, you know, found how to be superheroes, how to take this training they had and, and become something else. So they're almost like a brother or sister team in this. And uh, again, really, uh, I love the way Bernard draws them and what he's doing. Look at that. I get the feeling that, I mean, Red Arrow is, so far has been very bossy to some of the other members. She is pretty bossy. Right? She's, uh, she's a little misknow-it-all. Even but though, it, oh, sorry, even though you, you would think, like most people think, Damien's probably the big boss uh, or telling people what to do. Um, I think Red Arrow has really been... Uh, she's the field general. Yes. She's the one who goes out there. If you have a team, you know, he might be the coach, but she's the one on the field telling everybody and checking everybody and telling people who to slow their roll and and who to step up and all that stuff. She's a lot of fun. But I, I keep going back to this just because even watching you draw her, I, I think everybody's going to be really excited by Crush. I think Crush is really going to surprise people. I think she's going to be a fun character that, in some ways, she's what you expect. In other ways, not what you expect at all. Um, how long, Bernard, outside, you're drawing this right now, just for process for people, how long does it take you to draw a page? It takes me about, uh, now on average, five to six hours to do a complete page from a blank piece of paper to a finished inked version. Um, there's a couple different step process. I'll do a layout, uh, which I'll thumbnail and rough out. Then I'll do a rough pencil on the back of the board. Um, and then I'll do a finished pencils and then the inks. After the inks are done, I'll scan them in the computer, do another maybe 45 minutes of revisions and corrections. And then I'll email them to the colorist, Marcello Maiolo, who lives in Brazil. So it's a very kind of uh, global uh, art team. And, yeah, the, and the thing, too, that Bernard's not mentioning is we also get lots of notes. You know, we, we write these things, we draw these things. And then, you know, the editors come in and they'll give us some ideas and thoughts. So we're making revisions the whole way through. So any one book that you're reading... You know, from the time it was pitched and the process and it's drawn and it gets to you, it could be two to three months. Oh, yeah. So yeah. easily. So each book you're reading, you know, that you go, ugh, this, ugh. <laughs> There's know. a labor of love. <laughs> labor of love. Yeah. Mm, that's why we do it. So it's a lot of fun. Do, you, uh, do we have time to draw one more character? 
Do you want to try to draw? Yes. Aaron, right? Adrian. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think with Damien is, you know, look, he's already got a nice, rich history in the DCU. I think there's been a lot of effort to, in the last five years, you know, put him in a place and, and take him in a direction. And I have no interest in necessarily changing his direction, but challenging that direction. I think that as kids grow up, as you guys know, as we all turn around and as adults, you're completely evolving constantly. So the idea for Damien, I think, is that he turned around and he just had, you know, this journey and, uh, that he went with everybody on and sort of saw the adults do things that he did not think were so great and so in no justice. And so he comes back and realizes, you know what, maybe I know more than I think I know. And he wants to turn around and put a team together that represents him and his generation. Uh, I'm really, you know, I got two teenagers at home, so I'm super influenced by what's going on with kids today. And, you know, I think when we're older, we're always looking at the younger generation and going, ah, these kids, they don't know what they're doing. I'm so blown away by you kids. I think you guys are doing a great job. I think you're dealing with a technology uh, that we never had to deal with as kids that both is, is great, but also is very dangerous. Uh, I did a lot of things. I'm glad there was no cameras around when I was a kid doing those things. <laughs> but you guys are constantly uh, being under scrutiny. And uh, everything from what you guys did, you know, with the school shootings and going out and, and protesting, I, I just think it's great and it's awesome. And I think you guys, you know, I so look forward to what you guys are going to accomplish. And I think for this team, that's the same thing. It's like they have an idea of what they think it is being superheroes. And they're going to go out there and they're going to do their best. And they don't want to turn around and grow up and be their mom and dads. They want to be them. And so we're going to see this new generation of superheroes led by Damian Wayne, who I think kicks butt. And uh, they're going to try to make it happen. I think in our panel yesterday, uh, I mentioned, you know, they, they asked us how collaborating together was and what were some of the differences between some of the other books. You know, Adam uh, wrote Suicide Squad before. And I was working previously on Nightwing and Batman Beyond. And some of that is, uh, yeah, I mentioned there was a, like, sometimes there's challenges in each project, right? But part of that is it's a beautiful challenge because there's so much energy and passion. Uh, whenever I read Adam's scripts and stories, there's just this energy that's in there that harkens back to when I was a youth, you know, when I was a teenager and I really got into collecting comics. And I would go to the comic book store and, uh, you know, get my pull list every month. Um, uh, you know, that love started when I was uh, five or six and I would go to the drugstore where my mom would p buy groceries and stuff and I would sit there and just read all the comic books, you know, and then going to the comic book store and then getting the books and then putting them in the bags and boards and, you know, reading them. But it's also bringing that energy from when we were kids and, and huge fans of the medium into the pages and into the artwork and then also for you guys to then share along with. So hopefully, I think uh, we've done a pretty good job. Yeah. And uh, you, I hope you guys also come along for the ride as well. Yeah, I, I'm really fortunate that when I get um, pages in my email from Bernard, it's my mom calling, by the way. Shall I answer? <laughs> um, so what ended up happening is uh, I get these pages from Bernard in my email, and it's like Christmas. I mean, I open them up, and I've written these words. But then I get to sort of see them drawn out and sketched. And he always goes beyond what I even thought about on the page, you know. He's just such a, always been a big fan of his. So the chance to work with him has been awesome. And, you know, to create something together. Something that you hope, you know, is a success and lives a long time. Um, but it's been a ton of fun. And again, like, I think he just nails Damien. I just love the way he draws him. You know, even the little the little trebling lip and, and the chin and all the stuff that he does. Um, had you drawn Damien before you did this book? Actually, I've drawn Damien a, f a couple of times, but I still wasn't able to really lock down a, uh, a clear version of him. In Batman Beyond, we signed earlier with Dan Jurgens. Dan was the writer. I got to draw Damien, but 35 years older. Mm. right? So it's a more of an adult version, but still having to try to carry that um, attitude uh, in the character. 
Um, I've drawn him once in the Supergirl. He appeared in Supergirl when I worked on that book. Um, but still, it's a different, slightly different version. And here, you know, back in Supergirl, he was, he was part of Supergirl's team. But here with Teen Titans, he gets to be the leader. He gets to be the GM. And he's going out and he's recruiting all the other heroes that he wants uh, to be along with him uh, for the fight. So uh, this version is slightly different. It's a little bit more youthful, but I'm hoping to gain a little bit more emotion through the mask. Um, so there's some more emotion through the hair spikiness, uh, but also just in his gestures. You know, in the first cover, he's kind of like crouching down and holding his, holding his face. Yeah. And really with a sense of, um, you know, this is who I am now. Yeah, he doesn't have um, Dick or Tim's hand-me-downs. This is his team. Nobody's questioning his leadership. He's a guy who has a lot of confidence, and he's found people who have literally, like, a lot of the same thoughts and beliefs as he does. So he's, he's a lot of fun, man. And, and what I love about him is he's completely unpredictable, and he'll do whatever he has to do to win. And, and you know, it's so funny. I, we obviously know what's about to happen, so we have to be careful about talking about it. But he has some stuff coming up that I think is really going to blow a lot of people's minds in a good way. Like, you know, and uh, I, I just think he's such an interesting character. And look, living in the shadow of Batman is and trying to find your own identity is not the easiest thing in the world. Uh, that is a very long, dark shadow to uh, be underneath. I mean, he is a he is Bruce Wayne's son. That is, you know, un, unbelievable thing in comic books. So um, really think Damien's going to be an exciting and we're going to build on already the great stuff that we've already built on him, we're going to continue to build on. So we're excited about that for you. And, you know, uh, somebody we haven't talked about a lot is Wall Wallace West, uh, Kid Flash, who is another great character, who in our books, you know, uh, to use a, an analogy is, you know, he's a young, hip guy. He's into social media. Um, you know, if I was a superhero right now, I'd have two million followers on my Twitter account. Um, and he's a guy who is very touched in and sees what this can be for him and is enjoying every bit of it. But eventually also will get to a place where because you have powers doesn't mean you have to be a superhero. You know, do you? Is there a commitment to that? Is it because, you know, with great powers come great responsibilities? You know, he questions that. So he's also a fun character that we're really going to sort of explore, I think, in a different way than we've seen him so far. Because so far, I think, you know, he's... Um, got some big shoes to fill and uh we're gonna give him his own identity and really flush him out a lot more do you guys have any other questions are there artists out there young artists yes singers oh adrian <laughs> i mean i see you at every show you uh, last year you had some you brought some stuff you're actually working on your own comic book too right yeah. Yeah, but that's where it starts, buddy. So keep drawing, keep writing, keep dreaming. It's, 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 we need people like you guys out there, the next generation, to come up and do these and make these books. So we really appreciate everybody. And look at that. It's bad, bad, bad boy. <laughs> I often get asked... Um, you know, how, how young did I start drawing? And I, I think it's uh, my earliest memories, maybe like three or four years old. Wow. Since I could pick up a pencil. Um, uh, my cousins used to hang out. I used to hang out with my cousin's house. And um, they would all huddle, huddle around because I was the older one. I was maybe older, but elder by a couple years. So I could draw stuff for them. And we'd joke around and laugh. And, you know, it'd be like silly stuff like a dog pooing or something. But um, it was fun. And that, from that drawing, kind of uh, continued to go through from uh, elementary school, junior high, high school, and then eventually in college. Okay. So it's like an athlete, like yeah. a professional athlete. You put in your 10,000 hours? Exactly. 10,000 hours of proper work. There you go. The key word is proper that people yeah. skip over. It's not just 10,000 hours, but 10,000 hours of proper work. I promise you this, guys. I wrote a hell of a story, and he drew an even better book. So come check out the Noon Tea Titans because it's going to rock. And I hope to see you guys all and many, many more of these to come. And I really appreciate you being here today. Thank you so much.